In this video, we're going to talk about how you can create nested mutations using the photon package by Prisma. And so we're going to be kind of building on the, the full stack web application that we've made previously, which uses Next.js on the front end and a GraphQL API on the back end. Photon by Prisma is this amazing package that takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting of performing CRUD operations against your database. So it's this JavaScript package that you can use on your back end, which when you call it, you can take in data either from a REST API or GraphQL, and you could feed it into the Photon methods to either create new documents in your database, update them, or delete them. And so in the past, we built this blog application where you can create new users, and once you have users, you can then create drafts. So I could say like my first post with awesome content. And then you could enter in an email. And so you can see that you can kind of create new users, and then you can create new posts and that posts belong to users. So there's a one to many relationship going on here. And so the question came up, well, what if instead of sending multiple mutations, is there a way to just send one mutation that would both create a user and create multiple blog posts? And it turns out that, that there is. Just to familiarize you with, uh, with kind of where we're going here, if we take a look at the mutation for creating a new user, we can see that it's this mutation that's called sign up user, where it takes in a name and an email, and we end up creating a user. Similarly, the draft here has something called create draft, where it takes in a title, content, and then the author's email, and then we end up returning inf information about that particular post. If we go to our back end, we can see that with Prisma 2 and Nexus, the kind of the combination of the two allows us to have one line like this, create user, and that, and that will create the entire mutation, or it'll take the data that's coming in from the user, and we can perform the mutation, uh, create one user here. And so the create one user, we're just changing the name to sign up user, we're using it as is, whereas the create draft here, you can see that we're being more specific about what arguments we're allowed to pass in, and we're then taking those arguments and then passing them into this, this post create in a very specific way, exactly how we want it. And so you can see in the example of the user, while we're kind of using all that information as is with the create draft, one of the arguments that we're passing into Photon published, we're just defaulting to false. And so we're not even allowing the user to send it in. So that's to kind of to show how you can either use uh, a query and mutation right out of the box, or you can kind of customize it to your own specifics. And so since this create one user is, we're, we're using it right out of the box, there are some extra tricks that are hidden up, you know, the sleeve of this <laughs> that we can then expand upon a little bit. We can go into the playground here and we can create our own mutation. So we can start with mutation, sign up user, and you can see that we need to have data. Then we can have our email and name. But what's kind of interesting is that if we pull up the, uh, the docs here, that if we go to sign up user, we can see that under data here, that there's actually this, there's email and name, but that there's also post. So we can use posts here. And so when you click on that, it will then say that we can use this kind of create. So we can, it, we can go create. And this actually will take an array of all the posts we wanna make. So the title is my awesome post. So that's gonna be the, the first post that I wanna have. Oh, another thing we have to do is we need to pass in published here. 
and it's because I'm requiring that publish be passed in with, with all posts that are created. So title, content, and published are all required. And that has to do with the definition that we have in this schema.prisma file. Oh, okay, so I guess, so title is required. Content is optional because it has the question mark, but published is required. So I can have my title, my content, and then I'll make one of them not published and one of them published. And so now I'm just customizing what the return will be. So the idea is I want to sign up a user with an email and a name, and then I want to create two different posts. The first one's going to be called my awesome post. This is going to be published. The second one, though, will not be published. And then this is what I want in the kind of the return. So this looks good to go. I can press go, and we can see that it worked. So it created uh, a user and it created two different posts. So now if I go here and if I refresh the page, we can see that before we had one post, and now uh, there are two more that are added. What, the My Awesome post, we specified that we want Publish to be true, and so that came published right out of the bat, whereas my second post is not published. This is the one that we had before. Um, and then we can go up here and we can see that there are two users. So you can see that this is incredibly powerful because with one mutation, we are able to do three database operations, but that in certain, in many circumstances, you probably don't want to give your user this kind of flexibility. And so the other way to do this, to really kind of clamp down on what they're able to do is to create uh, a mutation instead. And so we're going to create something that's equivalent to this, but where we're going to lock down whether it, the, it's published or not. So we can create a, a custom mutation by, we can just add it after the publish. It'll be T field. Create user and draft. So the name and email are the same as what we had before. Or it's, it's similar to what we had for the create draft. The post, though, is a little bit different. We're going to use arg, and then it's going to be, we have to then specify what kind of input is allowed. And so I, I know that this one's going to be called post create many without posts input. And so this arg, I have to import at the top. It's going to be, it's a function within uh, Prisma Nexus. You might be wondering, where on earth did I get this? Well, you can, you can go to schema. And so when you go to the bottom, user create input, this is, the, this is what it's expecting here. So you can just use it here. So I want to pull off name, email, and posts. And then I want to return cdx otan.users.create. Data and then email, name, posts, create. And so then what I'm doing here is I'm passing, I'm doing this users create. I'm going to pass in the email and the name from here. And then in the posts, what I'm doing is I'm then creating a mapping function where I'm pulling off title and content from posts so that I can create uh, an array of objects that have title and content. But here I'm passing and published uh, is true. Uh, and so this should all work. So what I can then do is if I take this, this mutation, I can then fire off this mutation 
and it should be interchangeable. Oh, okay, so it's failing because I need to rebuild it. So if, if you run into this, you can go npm stop and then npm start. You might have to do npm run build. So I had to remove the input and I also have to change the email because it has the constraint. But you can see that once I made those tweaks, this works exactly how I expect. And if I refresh this, it should work as well. And it does. You can see that there are now three users and two additional posts.